So, Somalia. Somalia, one of the most dangerous places in the world. Pirates, right? In the failed state of Somalia, piracy has become a lucrative business. Western navies are hunting down Somali pirates in the Indian Ocean. Kidnapping. It is not a safe place. It is difficult to operate in and is becoming increasingly hazardous. And the worry is now with this kidnapping of an aid worker that that could hamper aid work in the country, which needs it so desperately. Extremists. Two Americans are among the at least 20 people killed in an attack at a hotel in Somalia. The terror group Al-Shabaab is claiming responsibility. What if I told you there was another country inside Somalia that is somewhat unknown to the outside world and doesn't have such horrific events? This is Somaliland. We're in a war zone. It is dangerous. There is a, you know, risk involved. M.A.N. I know what you're thinking. This doesn't really look like Somaliland, does it? Uh, the reason is, is because it's not. Uh, I just wanted to jump in before the video starts and say I had some problems with the ISO setting on my camera and uh, I must have accidentally knocked it or something and I knocked the ISO up to a high level which basically means that there's a, a lot of, of noise and uh, blurriness in some areas. Uh, but I, I had to delete a lot of clips sadly because they were unusable But I think you'll still get the general idea of the video and then at the end I'll jump in and tell you what's going on now Salam alaikum Alaikum salam Hey, Ahmed Hi Nick oh, yeah. Hey Nick <laughs> Hello. What's up, Yoru? What's up, What's up, y'all? Assalamu alaikum. Happy to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right. So we've just driven uh, from Hargeisa, the capital, to uh, a smaller city called uh, Burma, and uh, we've just come to a tea house. Drove about two hours through the through the oh, desert. And uh, hello. And uh, now we're going to have a traditional tea here. And then we're going to explore the city and then head up into the mountains. So it should be quite interesting. Ethiopian border we should be able to see from a viewpoint we're going to. So Okay, so we just met up with uh, Khaled's friend. Ahmed. Ahmed, yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm just gonna ask him a few questions. You live in uh... in Goroma. Goroma? Yeah, I've been living in Goroma now for like almost a year. Uh -huh. And pretty much is you like it? I like it. Yeah, actually, it's my first time. I born and raised in Kuwait, so okay. when I moved to, I moved from China to Somaliland, which is four of my year. Wow. And so you've been actually, to many different places exactly. in the world. Yeah, yeah. I went to uh, born and raised in Kuwait, lived in China for nine years, and then I came here to Somaliland. And what made you come back? I came to Boroma to explore this place, and my parents are originally from Boroma and. Uh, when I came here, actually, it wasn't what I expected. I thought it's gonna be uh, actually bad, more worse, war, worse than this. Yeah, yeah. So, how does it compare to, let's say, China or Kuwait in terms of living conditions? There is no comparison because Kuwait and China, Kuwait and China, were more developed than Somaliland. But for living condition, it's actually you can find whatever you want in here. Okay. Yeah. So, so do you think that Somaliland has uh, potential to prosper and develop? Hopefully yes, hopefully yes. And we see uh, a lot of investment coming from especially UAE uh -huh. and a bit from the UK, right? Right. To put into the roads and, and things. So. Right, right. So I'm actually, I will give it five years maximum and it will be more developed than now. What about safety? Because I know a lot of people watching this at home, maybe uh, they would view Somaliland seen as it's 
an autonomous region inside Somalia, they might just uh, make the connection between Somalia and pirates and, and danger and kidnappings. What about Somaliland? Is it safe? Well, actually, Somalia, comparing to, to Somalia, uh, Somaliland is way safer. Yeah. There is no problems. You can walk around. Even for you as a YouTuber, you can walk around with your camera and nobody will talk to you. Yeah, right? So, so you recommend for tourists to come and have a look at 100%, Somaliland? 100%, 100%, yes. Welcome, guys. Anytime. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks for the interview. All right, thank you, man. What are we up to now? We're going uh, for... We're going to the Sheikh Ali mountain. Cool, and that's at the viewpoint where you can see Ethiopia? There you can see Ethiopia and the whole Boroma, and it's pretty much... Beautiful. Yeah. All right, thanks, yeah. Ahmed. Right, Appreciate man. it. All right. So we've just come up the hill to this kind of green area here. Uh, it's really interesting. This part of Somali land is really green. Uh, other parts that we visited on this trip are quite barren and dry. Um, we're going to go up the hilltop soon and we'll get a, a nice view. But I just want to share with you, like an interesting thing that I've noticed in Somali land is, you know, that you've got the big cities, but it's also very much integrated with the the kind of traditional agriculture life, like even in the big cities you'll see people walking through with goats and and livestock and things. And uh, up here there's quite a lot of livestock. Obviously the agriculture is a huge part of these people's lives and keeping them um, keeping them fed and one of the main sources of, of money for the average person here. It's a lot drier here. On the coast it was so humid, you know, you walk outside you're sweating instantly, but the um, climate here is a lot less humid. So we've just arrived at uh, the bottom of this hill here and uh, you can see in the background um, to my right, there's uh, some people's houses there. They're made out of these little shacks, um, corrugated iron and um, blankets and things. This way. Wow, made it to the top. Have a look. This is really different to uh, the rest of the Somali land that I've seen. It's much more like green and the mountains in the background. And yeah, because you know, you see the city is all surrounded by mountains. And what's over in this direction? Uh, that direction actually where they put the garbage in. They put garbage down here? Yeah. Just here. And you're saying somebody owns this mountain? Yes, that's what I heard. Right. Somebody actually owned it. This would be like one of my favorite uh, towns I've been to in Somaliland so far. Wow, wow. I think. I mean, Berbera was nice on the coast, but uh -huh. this is, I really like the green and the hills, you know. Yeah. It's beautiful. This is a nice place for tourists to come visit? Uh, yes. If you're looking for a beautiful place, like it's uh, natural. Right. It's natural, yeah. There is no fancy restaurants or, or like a, a cinema theater, but it's just like, it's everything natural here and people are lovely, I guess. Yeah, yeah, they are really nice. Yeah. Khaled was saying this is the more educated city of, of Somaliland because yeah, of the university, right? They got almost like six to seven universities in here. Wow. And Amud is one of, I think Amud consider is the best university in Somalia. Okay. If you consider Somalia and Somaliland together. Oh, so that both Somalia and Somaliland, yes. the best universities in this town? Yes, yes. So do people come from Somalia to Somaliland to exactly, this town? Exactly, from Somalia, from Puntland, even from Djibouti, they all come here to study. Ethiopia? Even some of them from Ethiopia who lives or based in Somaliland, yes. Right. And so where's yeah. the Ethiopian border from here? Um, I can't actually tell, but just behind one of those mountains. Over in this direction? It could be, yeah, uh, or in the other direction, right there. Right. So that would be um, west, southwest, or southwest, I right. guess. Cool. Yeah.
so I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I am back in Europe now. Not for long though, I am heading to another country. I'll talk about that in just a second. Somaliland was a special trip for me. Uh, one of the reasons I called it Somali R uh, was for the reason that not many people around the world really know what Somaliland is. And so I wanted to, you know, get the attention of people by calling it Somalia, which it technically is as it's internationally known. But locally it's a whole different ball game. But majority of people don't know Somaliland, so calling it Somalia and the titles and things, that really, I think, showed people that Somaliland exists. So I hope that achieved uh, by showing people that Somaliland is its own thing and it's pretty much its own country. Uh, I have got many messages from Westerners and, and other people around the world telling me that they're thankful for me showing them this because they had no idea that Somaliland existed and, and by calling it Somalia they were able to learn about that. So I hope you guys, I hope the locals understand why I chose to call it that. A big thank you to all the Somalilanders for everything and uh, it was a, a pretty special trip to um, you know get the, the usual preconceived ideas broken. Uh, the next trip I will tell you in just a moment. Uh, it's going to be one of the biggest trips of my life um, and I have no hesitation in saying that. It's going to be pretty extreme. Um, but I just want to say a thank you to Skillshare again for sponsoring the videos. A lot of these places like Somaliland and, and traveling in, in lots of places in Africa can be quite expensive surprisingly. Um, so thank you to Skillshare for helping out with the channel here. If you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an online learning community with uh, thousands and thousands of uh, classes basically covering anything from creativity to business. I'm going to recommend Sarah's courses again. Sarah's courses are about how to vlog and film and put it all together and be a YouTuber if you want to uh, go down that avenue for fun or for your career. I'm going to leave a link below. If you click that link you'll get uh, two months free on Skillshare Premium and then from then on it's about ten dollars a month and you get access to all these classes. It really helps you become a stronger version of yourself I believe. I've personally used it in the past and I'm happy to recommend it to you guys. So uh, cheers for Skillshare. So the next location. The next location is in the Middle East slash South Asia, Central Asia regions. It's uh, had a terrible history and the history continues to be, you know, very brutal day by day. This is a project I'm going to be working on. I was contacted by, um, let's say, a big corporation, I can say that. I'm not going to give too much away for many reasons, including personal uh, safety while I'm in this country. Um, but yeah, I am a bit nervous, but also very excited to be a part of something of this magnitude, really. It's going to be, um, <laughs> it's going to be extreme, but um, I, I'm very much so looking forward to it. And uh, I'm not going to be releasing videos for maybe two in between two and three weeks I would say. I'm not going to put a date on it, it depends on a, a number of different variables. I hope that you all will um, be waiting when I come back and uh, you'll be looking forward to seeing the video because it's going to be um, it's going to be interesting for a huge number of ways and uh, I, uh, <laughs> I can't wait to go and uh, see what it's going to be like. Much love to all the nice comments from all of you from all over the world. You know your comments are, are beautiful and they really do you know make it all worth it and, and they make my day and uh, you know I, I still do love what I'm doing so thank you very much and uh, in case I don't see you good afternoon good evening and good night hello what's up your room what's up your room what's up your room assalamu alaikum alaikum assalamu alaikum alaikum assalamu alaikum alaikum assalamu alaikum